Okay, we're back here with Kim, and as promised, we'd show you some exercises that are down the track. She's now at week seven post-op for a medial meniscectomy for this knee. Now, just a bit of FYI, this knee here has had previous problems as well, and lately she's been offloading this to, and putting some weight on that, which is natural, so that's getting a bit sore. The good thing about her rehab is if she does things on both legs, she's gonna improve both knees. So this knee had previous problems, she now can work on that again. It's like a double rehab for that leg, which is gonna, gonna even her up. So these exercises I show you today are just a few of what we're doing inside week seven. So it's not all the exercises, it's just a few that we're showcasing today. And there are a lot of them are single leg, so we can work on individual legs to try and strengthen little problems up. First one we're gonna get to doing is trying to do a step down toe tap. Now, this one is for isometric loading here. Okay, so she's gotta get used to being in like a 30 degree angle at her knee to load up her quads, tendon, patellar tendon, get her VMO going, to get accept load through the joint. And so she, the way she does that is move the other leg. So Kimmy's gonna try and reach forward, tap the front of the box, and you can see already how she, the weakness kicking in here, she's got to try and control that knee. So at the moment at week seven, her knee feels fine, doesn't really hurt, but you can see how it wobbles like this. Now that's a mixture of weakness through here, bit of neuromuscular sort of shut down, bit of weakness through the hip, all post-surgical and post-injury, that she will slowly get better. So what I don't want her doing, have a rest of her leg, is doing full on single leg squats yet because she hasn't even got the control right just isolated in that sort of isometric position. So it's important that you don't sort of rush ahead and try and do all these single leg squats on one leg to get the leg stronger. You've got to get the control better. You can see on that leg, her control is definitely better on that one. See, she can just hold that bit better. It's still weak because she's you know got some previous issues on that, and that's why we're doing rehab on both legs, but that controls are better. Go back to your left one again, Kim. So crucial things with this one is making sure that she is bent here, but also sitting back here. So she's got to engage her hip to help control the knee. That's the important stuff. You're not just shoving your knee forward. So when she's doing that, she's then focusing on, can I keep that kneecap in line with my foot and get that endurance? And the endurance is at about 10 forward and backs to get her enough time spent on that. That's good one, Kim, well done. All right, so like I said, don't go for the full single leg squat of week seven. You try and just do what we call an isometric one, but move the other leg, which is getting that sort of familiarity of walking and load bearing. Um, next thing I want you to do is doing a ball squat on one leg, but again, we're just isometric. We're just trying to learn how to control and load. So, pop that one on there for me, Kim. If we do an unaffected leg first, with this one, it's a real favorite one, this exercise, because it really targets single leg loading and your glute meat on that, that lateral hip loading on that side. Um, but for her, we're also just trying to get the quads going as well. We're trying to accept load down through one leg. Now, when she does it this way, we're doing on the right leg, so which is the unaffected leg. So just bend that up for me. With this one, very important again, you try and bend just like the other way we did on the box, you're trying to bend at 30 degrees here, but she's got to try and sit back. The more she engages her hip and goes into like a sort of a squat type deadlift, the better. So I'm just gonna correct her a little bit there. She just needs to lean forward a little bit more and sit that hip backwards. Now once she's got that position, this is again isometric work for here. But to crank up this, she just needs to push hard into the ball. As hard as you can, you're okay with that, Kimmy? Now, that's an isometric load for like 30 seconds. You just gotta hold and hold and hold. She'll get some screaming through here, but good muscular stuff. There shouldn't be any joint pain with this. And again, she's gotta try and keep her form right, keep it level here, try to keep her pelvis level. Um, now, if you don't have a ball, just push against the wall, or put a pillow against the wall and just push against the wall. Of course, the ball is a lot easier because you can get some power in there, but if you haven't got a ball, just use a wall. Go around the other way, Kim. Let's have a look at this other side. So if we're going this way, when we look at this leg here, stand on that left one for me, she just finds this way harder because there's just not as much strength there, right? And this is what we've got to try and do is fix up strength left versus right. She then just has to focus on making sure that knee stays in line. Over time, the little wobbles will get less. You just got to look at what she's doing. She's got to pick this up a little bit here, push harder here, sit back there. Keeps her quiet, doesn't it? That's good, yeah. 
okay? And she's finding it tough, but not unachievable, you know? And these are sort of workouts that we need to get her doing, which slowly build up enough strength and enough guts in that knee to then handle other load. While we're on quads, um, what I like her doing in week seven is getting into a power band to try and get some isometric sort of strengthening work. So what she's doing at the moment, if you put that leg in there for me, Kim, this is like, almost like a warm up, if you like. It's just trying to get that tone better. I find if you can work on isometric quads work, sort of pre doing all your exercises, push that straight for me, Kim. That sort of movement there really helps fire up a quad that's sort of going a bit sleepy from surgery. So it's a nice one to do probably prior to all your other exercises or the first thing you do when you get off the bike, that's maybe the first thing you work on. And this one though, you've got to make sure that you don't fall in the trap of putting weight through the back leg. And I've talked about this before quite a bit, but she's got to try and stay loaded down onto that heel. So it's the more she drives through the heel, she can use her hip a little bit to extend, but she's really focusing on stretching the band and pushing into absolute total knee extension, okay? Now, week seven, she should have full extension in the joint range, so she should, there should be no block in there. So this one should be able to be done reasonably easily, and the more she squeezes here, the more tone she's gonna get, and the happier it's gonna be when she goes into her exercises. So it's a 30 second load with that, pretty easy stuff. And I, like I said, do that before all the other ones. Now the balance work that she's gonna do, come out of that Kim, is using a bow suit. Now this gets a little bit scary for someone who has sort of had surgery and hasn't been on one of these before. Um, I always, always start on a BOSU, not a wobble board. Wobble board is far too sort of wobbly for her stage at the moment. Um, this one is still wobbly, but it's a little bit kinder. Now, with this, always start with a pole, all right? So her first one is gonna be just, can you balance on that on one leg? Now, when people first get on this, there's a bit of a neuromuscular change and it'll start wobbling all over the shop. That's why the pole's really handy. Once she starts learning, you can see that moving there, she then has to hold on to the pole, that's why the pole's there. She can also put her foot down on the back and that'll help stabilize and re-let it settle and then she tries and keeps trying to lift that leg off. Now this one is done for about 30 seconds, okay? So it's quite hard, but it's not taxing for the knee too much, it's just difficult balance wise. She'll get better and better and better. And all that feedback about loading is gonna be so helpful for her down the track. Um, tricks with this though, make sure you are sitting in knee flexion and hip flexion. So you're using, you're active through here, you're using the muscles in the leg to help stabilize. You're not just sort of sitting locked in extension trying to use your balance. You need to try and use your muscle system to balance and hold that. And again, trying to hold that as flat as she can there. But that's really good. Um, and then just swap left, right, left, right. The other thing she's doing, because she is squatting at the moment, I'll show you her squat at the moment. Um, because she is squatting and she's about to squat with a little bit of load, um, we also want to get her balancing on this and squatting. Okay, so this one's done without load at week seven. She just needs to work on trying to get her feet in the right position. So right the outside of the BOSU and working on going through a full squat range as much as she can. Now, when she squats, what she used to have is a bit of a tendency to hinge forward. And it's a very common thing when you start having a bit of knee weakness or you don't trust your knees or they're a bit tight, you start sort of hinging forward and turning into some sort of deadlift. She's got to really just focus on staying upright as much as she can when she goes down. So I like people sort of trying to say, can you keep your upper body upright and sit down? The knees will naturally bend. We've just got to make sure that she's keeping her form as far as when her shin angle comes forward, her back angle is staying the same, all right? So keeping that upper body upright is probably the best cue and then trying to sit the hips down is your second cue. Then you worry about what the knees are doing. Of course, focusing on where those knees are going in and out or that sort of thing. That's good, Kim. Oh, very well done. Um, now when her, she does her loaded squat, this is when you can really see what the angles are doing. I'm just gonna give her four kilos. I mean, it's nothing major. <laughs> you might think that's pretty, pretty light, but we don't want anything too heavy. There's no point putting anything too heavy through at the moment. And she's got quite a good squat. We just gotta make sure she doesn't go too wide at the knees. We wanna make sure she stays like nice and parallel with the feet. They are wider than the hips, so there's in that position there. And when she squats down, we've got her shin angle 
vertical, if you like, that when she's this way, we've got to try and make sure, when you're looking at her, she doesn't tilt that upper body too far forward, and she's doing quite well. If you notice, the knees go first, if you see that. So some sort of cueing has to happen where she has to make sure she sits the hips as well as the knees. So she doesn't load up the knees first and then try and sit down, okay? Some people try and sit down first and then let the knees go forward. We've got to make sure she does hips and knees together at the same time, and then she works really well on her form, and that's fantastic. So there's a few little ones for this week. Again, she's doing twice as many exercises as that. There's a whole bunch of other stuff she's also doing to help her rehab, but those ones are the ones we're focusing on this week. See you next time.